Right, I welcome members to the 11th meeting in 2016 of the Delegated Powers and Law Reform Committee. As always, I ask members to switch off mobile phones, please. Agenda item one is the Land Reform <coughs> Scotland Bill. This item is for the committee to consider the delegated powers provisions in the bill as amended at stage two. Section 89A was added to the bill at stage two. This adds a new section 32B into the Agricultural Holdings Scotland Act 1991, the 1991 Act. New section 32B provides that the Scottish ministers may by regulations make further provision about individuals who are new entrants to who are progressing in farming. This power is subject to the negative procedure. Part 10 of the bill as amended creates a new process whereby tenants of 1991 Act tenancies may assign their tenancies to new entrants or those who are progressing in farming in circumstances where the landlord does not wish to accept the tenant's notice of intention to relinquish the 1991 Act. Tenancy. <coughs> the new process for a relinquishment could impact upon the rights and duties of parties to existing 1991 Act leases in a significant way. The definition of the group of persons who are new entrants to or are progressing in farming for the purposes of the new process is accordingly fundamental to the scope of application of the new process in practice. The committee may accordingly wish to draw this power to the attention of the Parliament on the basis that the affirmative procedure would appear to represent a more appropriate level of parliamentary scrutiny given the significance of this power and its centrality to the new scheme of relinquishment of 1991 Act tenancies. Does the committee wish to draw the power in the new section 32B of the 1991 Act as inserted by section 89 of the bill to the attention of the Parliament on the basis that the power could be more appropriately subject to the affirmative procedure? Do. Does the committee agree to report that it's content with the remaining delegated powers provisions and the procedure to which they are subject in the bill? Yes. Um, right, thank you. Well, moves us on. John. <coughs> I think um, I, I, I'm led to believe that um, Jim Hume has lodged an amendment um, in this regard, um, which is seeking that the affirmative procedure be invoked. Um, and I think. Um, certainly, uh, we as a, as a committee should be supportive or indeed support um, this amendment. Um, essentially, both mean the same things. Thank you. Stu? Um, I think it's quite proper that the committee uh, makes comment broadly in the terms that uh, John Scott suggests, uh, but uh, I would be as well to indicate that I shall listen to the Minister's response to that amendment before concluding how I as an individual MSP will treat that amendment when it comes uh, before Parliament at stage three. Thank you, Mr. Collins. John? Uh, yes, I mean, I agree, I agree with <coughs> really both the comments, and especially Stuart's comment that, um, I mean, I think we might have considered lodging an amendment ourselves if one hadn't been uh, lodged previously, and I would have been uh, happy with that. Therefore, in principle, it, I would support the amendment. Um, however, as, as always, one wants to listen to the arguments on both sides. <coughs> yeah, I, I think given the guidance that we've got, it, it, it changing from a negative to affirmative procedure, and being mindful that if an amendment hadn't been lodged, that we would be quite likely putting forward our own, the committee would be putting forward our own amendment, I think I would be supportive uh, of the amendment that is lodged. And I would hope that the committee would be supportive of that too. Well, I think what members have indicated, <coughs> pardon me, around you, and I, I do agree with it, is that, yes, we have put on record clearly we think it should be an affirmative, but I think I, I do concur with the, the, the general view that we do actually want to see what the government minister does actually have to say at the time um, before actually deciding which way to vote on, on, on the basis that it's only at that point that we have the full argument. But I think the committee has quite clearly laid down its, its view, uh, which is, I think, unanimously that it should be affirmative as we currently see it. Members content with that? Thank you very much. Okay, on that basis, I move forward to agenda item two, which is Land Reform Scotland Bill again. This item is for the committee to consider correspondence received from the Scottish Government on expected amendments to part three of this bill. The committee, at its meeting on the 8th of March, agreed to write to the Scottish Government on an expected delegated power to create a public register of information about people who have a controlling interest in land. Scottish Government indicated, identified that delegated power would be subject to an enhanced form of affirmative procedure the first time the power is used. The committee wrote expressing concern and suggesting the enhanced affirmative procedure should be used every time unless subsequent regulations could be limited to minor amendments. The Minister has confirmed 
that an enhanced <coughs> affirmative procedure would apply to the first power, first time, sorry, to the power only the first time it is used, and subsequent uses would be subject to the affirmative procedure. Uh, do members have any comments? Yeah. Just say that I, I welcome um, this apparent change of heart uh, by the minister, if I've understood it correctly, um, and I think it is. I'm pleased to see that subsequent uses thereafter will be subject to the affirmative principle. Okay. The committee may wish to know that the Scottish Government brought forward amendments to, the, to make this power subject to an enhanced affirmative procedure in light of the committee's efforts and concerns. The committee may also wish to note the enhanced affirmative procedure will only apply to the first exercise and that there is no requirement for this procedure to be used in subsequent exercises of the power. However, there is a provision for made for consultation to be carried out on future uses of the power and subsequent exercises will also be subject to the affirmative procedure as John Scott's just indicated. This does however represent a reduced level of scrutiny for future exercises of the power and accordingly the committee would expect that such future uses would be focused on minor and technical amendments and not significantly alter the policy set out in the original regulations. Does the committee agree that I should reiterate these remarks on behalf of the committee in the context of the debate on these amendments? Is the committee otherwise content to note these amendments? Yes, Thank you. Does the committee agree to consider the stage three amendments to, be, to the delegated power in section 36 of the bill at its meeting on Tuesday? Yes. Thank you. Agenda item three is instrument subject to negative procedure and no points have been raised by our legal advisers on the prisons and young offenders institution Scotland Amendment Rules 2016, SSI 2016-131. Is the committee content with that instrument, please? Yes. Agenda item four is instruments not subject to any parliamentary procedure and again no points have been raised by our legal advisers on the Act of a Journal Criminal Procedure Rules 1996 Amendment Number 2 Serious Crime Prevention Orders 2016 SSI 2016 -137. Is the committee content with this instrument please? Agenda yes. item 5 is the Private Housing Tenancies Scotland Bill. This item is for the committee to consider the Scottish Government's correspondence on the delegated power in section 32 of the bill allowing Scottish ministers to designate a rent pressure zone. At our meeting on the 8th of March, the committee agreed that I would write to the Scottish Government on its behalf to outline its recommendation the power should be subject to the provisional affirmative procedure after a rent pressure zone has been designated rather than the negative procedure. The committee also agreed that pending the response from the Scottish Government, the convener could lodge an amendment to fill this recommendation. Now, the Minister for Housing and Welfare has written to the committee today. The Minister has indicated that she proposes to lodge an amendment at stage three so that section 30 of the bill is subject to the affirmative procedure for all regulations made under it. In light of this response, is the committee content with the proposed amendment to section 30 of the bill at stage three? Stuart. I think we've made very substantial progress on this and I very much welcome uh, the fact that the government has uh, lifted uh, the idea of it being a negative procedure and welcome what's happening. I would just um, endorse everything that Stuart Stevenson has said and I welcome the government um, taking this action which is the one we sought and very grateful that they have. Clearly the uh, committee is content with what's now being proposed. I thank you very much for that and I can close the meeting.